Hey guys, this is Rick. It's summer 2018. It's been about a year since the introduction of segregated witness, SegWit technology on the BTC fork of the Bitcoin chain. So I thought it could be appropriate to do a little bit of, well, maybe not a post-mortem, but at least an evaluation of how things went. And in particular, how this has driven the ecosystem developers away from the BTC fork of Bitcoin. Let's look what the data says. So one year later, Bitcoin and segregated witness, and as I promised, IRC. How does that factor in? First, the Bit BTC fork of Bitcoin. Last August, the Bitcoin chain split into two different chains. It had one fork to the BTC ticker, kept, uh, kept the old ticker, which is a coincidence. It, it is not the same chain as the old chain. And one fork to BCH, now known as Bitcoin Cash. The BTC fork of Bitcoin adopted something called segregated witness technology. And one year later, let's take a look at how adoption has climbed. Because on the surface, it might seem that this is a huge success story. Segregated witness, after all, being a new transaction type and requiring a lot of recoding of existing applications, existing infrastructure, existing wallets, existing code. And we see here that from the fork time in August up until today, one year later, we've reached an adoption of almost 40%. That sounds like a huge success story. That is definitely adoption of this technology. But that's not the whole story. And when we look at more data, we see that the picture is actually the direct opposite. Because even though we're looking at 40% and it seems like sort of a success, this is actually not adoption. Sadly, this is disadoption. This is disadoption. Because when you look at another graph, the number of transactions per day, this is the past year. So this is when SegWit was introduced last summer. We see that there is a climb to just about when SegWit starts growing in terms of percentage transactions. And here, transactions taper off to a very, very, very low level, not even the same level as we had in the beginning of the year, as the SegWit adoption rate keeps climbing toward 40%. So what happened was that instead of taking on the burden of supporting segregated witness, notably while being quite harassed by a never-ending army of sock puppet accounts, or at least what seems to be sock puppet accounts on Twitter and wherever to do so, the actors simply left the ecosystem. The segregated witness transaction share has climbed to 40%, not because people are adopting segregated witness in the BTC chain of Bitcoin, but because all the other actors are leaving the BTC chain altogether. And therefore, it has a growing share of the few or the, small, the smaller amount of actors left. This is a completely different picture than the one we first saw. Let's take a little closer look at this. What I'm, when I talk about a burden of adopting segregated witness, what in the world am I talking about? Segregated witness is an opt-in technology. It's adopted by a soft fork. It's backwards, backwards compatible. There's no burden whatsoever with adopting segregated witness, right? We've heard this so many times, but as unfortunately as so much else from the BTC camp of Bitcoin, it is a false narrative altogether. I don't know why this false narrative is being spread that it was not a burden at all to adopt segregated witness. 
probable reasons are either that the people spreading this have a tunnel vision and only seeing a developer perspective. It can be plain mediocre engineering. It could be that the developers aren't using their own software or most likely, frankly, all of the above. For the individual users, yes, it's, it can be said to be opt-in because you're, you have the option of using a new transaction type in Segregated Witness. Assuming, of course, that the user wallet was updated, which is nowhere near certain, it's a pretty high bar to meet. It's a pretty, pretty big assumption because there's an inertia. This is important. There's an inertia in every ecosystem. Working software lives on. Working software doesn't need to be updated except for security fixes. And there's no big reason to introduce a new technology that's optional. And when you're looking at real world factors like this, a very, very real, a very, very real effect. These kind of ecosystem effects get completely lost when you're treating software development of the BTC fork of Bitcoin like something like a ninth grade science project. This is not a theoret theoretical academic construct and it really needs to be treated, it deserves to be treated with the ecosystem effects, with the social effects that it has on people rather than as a ninth grade science project where the developers and the hangarounds of the developers are venting rage against anybody who disagrees with the use case. I mean, in the real software ecosystem world, if your design does not agree with how people use it, that's something you're very interested in, so you can change the software. The BTC fork of Bitcoin has done the exact opposite. When people aren't using it as the developers intended, developers are literally harassing the users until the users get what are behaving the way they want, the developers want. Or, as we have seen, the ecosystem developers just leave. So, more importantly, the Bitcoin ecosystem is far more than its end users. Even if this was opt-in to the end users, the Bitcoin ecosystem is so much more. And while a new transaction type might very well be optional for the end user, it is certainly not optional for any other actor, in particular not those that aspire to have a view of the ecosystem. Because if you want to see the state of the ecosystem, Obviously, you must be fully aware of anything that's optional to an end user. So there was a deranged level of burden put on every single software in the entire ecosystem with the adoption of a segregated witness. In particular, software like block explorers, exchanges, analytics, trading, and so on. The list goes on. Combine this with the economic failure of the BTC fork of Bitcoin as a currency around New Year's 2007-2018, to 2018, where it cost up, upwards of $50 just to make a single transaction. And you can see that the ecosystem developers simply left for other ecosystems. This was very much a fool me once, shame on me. No, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me situation. Where, yes, I'm going to take this burden once so that my software survives and then I'm going to leave because I am not taking this ever again. Which, again, brings us back to the fact that real-world factors like this get lost when you treat software development like a ninth-grade science project. 
You can't do that. And in particular, you can't vent rage against people pointing it out. If you do, your science project doesn't have an ecosystem future. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now with the BTC fork of Bitcoin. We're seeing disadoption that looks good on the surface because the new introduced technologies are growing in share, but that's because people are leaving. That's because the old ecosystem actors are going elsewhere. And I'll get back to these social issues and the market issues in the next presentation, because they're there's a lot of things that have happened since Bitcoin was introduced in 2009 and 10 years onward, 2009, uh, 2019, next year. The market has changed. But even so, the burden of changing is not something that should be unfamiliar. Because, you know, we know that the BTC fork of Bitcoin, the, the developers of the BTC fork of Bitcoin understand this. They understand it deeply. They just aren't taking it into account into their own software. And how do we know that they know this and understand this? We know this because the development is coordinated on something called IRC. This is a list of IRC channels taken straight from the Bitcoin wiki. And it's reasonably recent because you can see the lightning development channels down here. So this is not something back from 2009. And IRC, Internet Relay Chat. This is a technology that was, was created in 1988, literally 30 years ago. Anybody using IRC today knows instinctively that protocols live on, software lives on. Not due to technology, not due to be being better, not due to development ecosystems, but due to social factors. Due to social factors. And anything breaking IRC, the way segregated witness broke Bitcoin, would have led to an absolute outcry in the IRC community. And yet, and yet, confoundingly, mind-boggingly, the BTC fork of Bitcoin developers were using IRC to develop segregated witness. You can call this a cognitive dissonance, if you like. You can call it a market ignorance. You can call it treating the BTC fork of Bitcoin like a ninth grade science project. Regardless, the result is the same that the ecosystem developers, not the, not the developers of the protocol software, but the ecosystem, the much bigger ecosystem, which is critical for the protocol software to go anywhere. The ecosystems have left for other ecosystems, notably Ethereum and the BCH fork of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. So while SegWit adoption seems to be growing, if you're just looking at the, the SegWit share of transaction chart, what we're seeing is disadoption. And that makes me sad because BTC was a really, really good technology until some developers forced out the original developers and took it on a completely different direction. The original technology lives on, it scales well, and the, it lives on in the, in, the, in the BCH fork of Bitcoin, which I believe has a much, much stronger potential than this dead end that SegWit in, uh, introduced. And so in the next video, we're going to look closer at a market update what did it look like in 2009 versus 2019? Because a key insight here is that phone to phone cash transfers are no longer impressive. That's no longer impressive. In China, there's Tencent and Alibaba doing that all the time. In the Nordics, you have Swish, you have Vips, you have, you have people trans, uh, transferring cash everywhere on their phones. In the US, you have Venmo. 
the game has changed fundamentally. And the question is, where does that, where does that put Bitcoin in terms of disruption? And we're coming back to that Friday after next.